Learn how to crochet in the chain, including how to crochet in the top loop and how to crochet in the back ridge loops. Plus, I'll be giving my best tips to make it easier for you to work into these back ridge loops. As a quick refresher, when making our chain stitches, we're going to start with a slip knot. Place your slip knot on your hook and pull tight. To make your chain stitches, you yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop on your hook. There's one chain. Let's make a few. Each chain has a top loop and a bottom loop. And if you rotate your chains, you're going to see a bump along the back. These bumps are called the back ridge loops. Sometimes they're referred to as the back bumps. When a pattern says to work into the second chain from the hook or the third or fourth, and it doesn't specify where in the chain to work, I always work into the top loop. For example, if the pattern said to work into the second chain from the hook and single crochet, I would insert my hook under this top loop and single crochet. Here's the second chain from the hook. I would insert my hook under this top loop and single crochet. And if the pattern said to single crochet in each chain across and it didn't specify where to work into the chain, I would default to working again under the top loop and into the next chain under that top loop single crochet. If the pattern specifies to work into these back ridge loops, here's how to work into them. You rotate and find the right back ridge loop to work into. So if the pattern said in the second chain from the hook into the back ridge loops, you would find the second back bump and insert your hook into this back bump and then single crochet. Here's the second chain from the hook. If we're going to work into the back ridge loops, we're going to rotate our work and find that second bump. And we're going to insert our hook into the second bump and then single crochet. If the pattern said to work into the back ridge loops all the way across, we would continue working into this next back ridge loop. Insert your hook into that next back ridge loop and then single crochet. Here's the next back ridge loop. And you can make any stitch into these back ridge loops. It doesn't just need to be a single crochet stitch. Now let's say the pattern said to half double crochet in the third chain from the hook working into the back ridge loop. Here's the front of our chain, here's the back. We're gonna find that third back ridge loop and insert our hook into that back ridge loop and half double crochet. To make our half double crochet, we would yarn over, insert your hook into that back ridge loop, the third one from the hook, and then half double crochet. One more example, let's say the pattern said to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook working into the back ridge loops. We would count one, two, three, four, rotate your work, and I like to count again just to make sure I'm working into the back, into the correct back ridge loop. There's the first, second, third, and fourth, and we would insert our hook into this fourth back ridge loop. So if we're working into this fourth back ridge loop and making a double crochet stitch, we'd yarn over, insert our hook into this back ridge loop, and complete our double crochet stitch. And you can work in these all the way across, doing whatever the pattern says to do. Let's take a moment and talk about the last back ridge loop. As you can see, here's a bump and here's a bump. And here's the last bump. 
but it can get confusing because of the slip knot that we made that started our chains. One thing you can do to help is to make your slip knot nice and tight, and that will help you differentiate between the slip knot and the last chain or back ridge loop. I have now one chain left to work into. You can see the front here, and when you rotate it, here's that last back ridge loop to work into. Working into the last back ridge loop, I'm gonna single crochet. If you are having troubles working into the back ridge loop, one of the things you can do is go up a hook size when making your chains. Let's say the pattern called for an H hook. You could try going up one hook size and use an I hook, for example, or even go two hook sizes up. And in this example, use a J hook because then your back ridge loops are gonna be easier to work into. And if you're struggling to work into the back ridge loops, I recommend making your chains looser. So instead of making them really tight like that, try making them looser. By using a larger hook, and making your chains more loosely, you're gonna be able to work into the back ridge loops much more easily. After making your chains loosely and with a larger hook, when you're about to start the first row, you can go back to the hook size recommended in the pattern. In this example, I'm using an H hook. Now when I go to work into the back ridge loops, they're gonna be much looser to work into and much easier. So if we're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook into the back ridge loop, you'll see that it's much easier to work into. So why do we work into the back ridge loops? There are a number of reasons. A lot of my blanket patterns say to start the blanket body by working into the back ridge loop so that when you go to add the border, there aren't any large gaps or unwanted holes between the blanket body and the blanket border. Working in the back ridge loop can make such a difference when you go to add the border. And at the end of the day, I want you to be happy with the end result of whatever you're making. So when I say to work in the back ridge loop, I've tested it to see is it absolutely necessary. And when I feel it is, I include it in the pattern. And it's not just for blankets. There's many other patterns where it just, in my opinion, looks better when you work into the back ridge loop at the start of the pattern when working into the chains. I highly recommend taking the time to learn how to crochet in the back ridge loops, as I know you'll be really happy with the end result. If there's anything at all I can do to help or if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting in the chain.